Hello, and welcome back to Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the Zim Generator. That allows us to do drawings like Processing does, or P5JS. We always thought that uh, the Canvas and, and Zim could do what Processing did without problem. Hey, we can draw shapes. Hey, we've got a ticker, so a ticker will process, in a sense, keep on updating. Uh, but then we realized what what processing is doing. It's actually doing, instead of absolute position drawing, like from coordinate x to coordinate y, xy to xy2 <laughs> versions, um, and using sines and cosines, instead of doing that, it's doing relative drawing, but in a shape. And we didn't have that. So we added that in Zim Generator, which can help make generative art, for instance. So if we come in here, here's some examples from the Zim Generator. And we can look at those, but it might be nicer to build those, some of those with code. And we'll look at that at the end as a conclusion. I will show you this example in the beginning, though. This is Bloob right here. And what we're doing is we're drawing noise, basically. And we can control the curvature of that noise and the speed of it. Let's do the curvature if we bring that down. So this is with a Zim dial. And there it is, very, very. So with processing, you often use this thing called that GUI, which is just kind of like this HTML overlay pull down of stuff. It's quite nice for what it does, but it really turns your work into more of like an experiment and not really a finished product. So if you use Zim, then you've got finished product. This is cool. It's like, like almost looks like a lava lamp. As a matter of fact, this is an NFT that people have bought. This was the first NFT that we made. I think it was going for 12 Tezos. It's about $50 and we sold lots of them. Um, so uh, there's also the Zim version. Zim is an NFT as well that you can get if you so desire. Let's so check this the speed on this. If I slow it down, isn't that cool? It actually can slow down and reverse. So that's going, it's like I'm scrubbing through the noise equation right there. Very beautiful. So with Zim, you can um, do all this extra stuff as well, which is uh, pretty amazing. Yay. Okay, let's see how we can bring in the Zim generator. And by the way, there is somewhere on the Zim site, it's a little bit harder to find now, uh, news maybe. But when we launched Zim NFT, which is this version, we made uh, a big sort of uh, intro to NFT at the time, and talked about what NFTs are. But we also made this article right here, inv Invite for Generative Art Makers and Interactive Artists. So if we press this here, uh, that's me, Dr. Abstract. And then there's the DAT GUI right there. And this is an invite to people who have been using processing. Uh, by the way, processing was built on, in Java to start. It was, in a sense, a competitor for making art, uh, coding art to, to Flash in the early days of Flash. And so many people would make art in Flash. Then they started moving over a little bit to processing and or worked in both. And so that's kind of the history when JavaScript came along to, well, it's been around, but um, when HTML5 came along and people were porting things to JavaScript, uh, Animate went to export to CreateJS in, in um, JavaScript, and processing got ported to P5.js, maybe some other ones as well, but P5.js was one. So one of the things we can provide are embedded interfaces, and we've got lots of UI UX in, in Zim to be able to make your stuff look a bit better. There's the art in a book, there's uh, et cetera. So different dials, look at those lovely dials. Wow. Uh, another thing though that we can do is we can do crafted interactivity, such as the Zim Pen. So we showed you Zim Pen in the last tutorial. Here, we're not exactly making the art, but we're making a tool for the art. Like so specific tools to make a specific type of art. And we've done that a fair bit. Uh, that was one example with GenPen. We also made a Truchet maker. So you can go beyond just making the art, but make a tool for the art. And um, also, here's some other examples. We did many, many uh, tessellators, many, many uh, inner, uh, what would you call it? I didn't even show them here, but our op art making tools as well. 
So with Zim, you can make the tools to allow artists to make art, but also you to make art. You can make tools for yourself to make art. And so uh, that's pretty cool. All right, so that was an invitation out there. And uh, let's close that down. And why don't we go in and see what this generator looks like in code. So we'll go back to Zim and hit docs and type gen for generator. And here's the generator. The things that we can pass to the generator when we make it. A description of how it works. There is a setup like uh, P5.js has a setup. Primarily we're using draw. Setup is really done by Zim. And maybe that's why we put that here. So we're saying, hey, we don't even have a setup. This is uh, pretty well, uh, you just use Zim in its normal sense um, for the setup. <laughs> there might, I can't remember if there actually is a setup. Is there? Yeah, there is. So we do have a setup function if you so desire. But there could be a draw function or there could be a stamp function. So you can draw like process, duke, 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 and see the process. Or you can just stamp the results of that process. And this is us mentioning the difference between relative position and absolute position, as well as uh, some of the other features, count, pausing, and stepping. We have push and pop. This came from, well, arrays initially, which came from dishwashing initially. <laughs> but anyway, uh, coders got it from, uh, from dishwashers. Uh, then uh, processing has it in, in their loop. So in their loop, if you push something, it'll start remembering what you did. And if you pop it, uh, they'll go back to where you started and re remake it. So we have that as well. Uh, it was just a matter of remembering steps. We have clear and reset. And uh, you can also export frames to that could be then compiled in a video, etc. So there are there's a couple examples, but instead of showing you the example, we're going to go and take some of this code ourselves and put it in there. So in general, you make a new generator and then you can draw a line into that generator. But we usually draw that line in some sort of uh, function. So a draw function, which will keep on looping. In this case though, well, why don't we put this code into Adobe Animate and we can have a look at it there. So I'm gonna hit copy that. And we'll make a new file here. going to create from a very high and I've changed that uh, very high as well right throughout all this series to a 60s frame the <laughs> 60s frame the 60s cool man uh, 60 frames per second and we will oh we should bring in so under more settings here we could under HTML we could import our zim shim from the zip file that that we did way back in our first tutorial so if you haven't checked that out you, you might want to do that so that we can get zim working here well, that's basically all you do you download the zip and import that there and then you're ready to go we also did some centering and responsive work there so all in all we ended up saving a profile and there it is and I've just imported our profile that sets us up with oh, sorry the uh, Zim Shim and our stuff there. So we're okay, good to go. I think the default color is white. So we're gonna, uh, of, of, the pros of the generator is white. So we're going to draw on black here. Let's save the file, file save as. Uh, not pen, but rather 21 generator, generator. All right, hit the F9, pull up some code here. This is Zim21. Sorry, I still have a cold, so if I'm not quite as versatile of voice, that's reason. Um, 21 generator, and this is like processing or P5JS. <clears throat> okay, and paste. So drawing an octagon, we're gonna make a generator. We're saying show, show the steps and we can change the speed of that and stuff as well, but we have it. we'll just keep default. Each time we go then, we receive a count. We're gonna use that count to say if the count is eight, then stop the generator. We're gonna draw a line 
that basically says start at zero, zero. So uh, generator by default starts in the middle. You can adjust that, but it starts in the middle of the frame or stage. Then go 100 in the X, I suppose, zero in the Y, but rotate 45. So the next time it goes, this will be 100, but at a 45 degree angle. And then another 45, another 45. Not only that, but the zero, zero is wherever the last line ended. Okay, so that's not in the middle, but it will be zero, zero on the end of the first line. So go, basically it'll start on the end of the first line, uh, rotate 45 and draw 100. So how we did this, well, let's see, see it, what it looks like, control enter. There it goes. Did you see the process? Pretty fast. Okay, so it draws to the right. It then zero zeros here, rotated 45, zero zeros here, rotated 45. And that way we didn't have to calculate any angle. Well, we just put in the angle. We didn't have to calculate with sines and cosines where the actual X and Y of these things um, are located. Okay, so that's that example. Let's go grab another. No, not that. Oh, right. It's in the same same window here. Here's an example where we've put the max count of eight. So you can say how many times to the generator to go rather than do it in this manner. Okay, so same same thing, but we've provided a max count. Next, what we've done, same thing but we've hit the record line points is true. So that will record an array of where all the points that we just generated are. Then we're gonna make a blob. So when it's complete, oops, that should, oh yeah, that's okay. When the generator is complete, we're calling make blob, which is this function. <clears throat> we're gonna make a blob, a zim blob, based on those points. Color it red, add it to remove, remove the drawing. So a uh, generator draws everything in a drawing property. And therefore, if we want to drag that, we could say g.drawing.drag, or we could remove it. And let's grab this code and have a look at what that's doing then. Is this exciting? Ooh. We also have an s dot update here. Control enter. Oh, there it is. So the other drawing isn't there, and look, that gives us this. It's like, oh, okay, well, that's interesting. It's basically a processing drawing that we can actually turn into a Zim blob and uh, do things with. Okay, which I can make the stick color white, uh, no problem. Right. Let's go check out another one. there. <laughs> Here. Funny. Draw a fan of lines always going back to zero. Ah, so this is a little bit different in that, um, remember how the lines always just zero, zero means start wherever the last one stopped. So let's check out the difference here. We've set a max count if we're rotating at each of these five degrees. So that will basically just draw a circle or, you know, or, or whatever you want to call that, <laughs> array, a bunch of rays, go 360 degrees. Um, we're drawing the line from zero to zero, but here we're translating it back minus 200. So that basically means draw the line, but then translate back. Like go back to zero, basically, rotate five. So then you get this. See the difference? We draw the line, and instead of drawing the next line from there, we translate back and draw the line again. Translate back and rotate, and, and we get that. No, I could have left that open, I suppose. Oh, I do know, I remember now. I am looking for this right here. Uh, or stamp the fan of lines. So if we, instead of, uh, we well, could do that quite easily here. So you see how that drew it? No. Yeah. Okay. 
here we are stamping it. Instead of draw, stamp it. I'm not sure if processing actually has that or not. I think probably it does. But. So now when I hit refresh, it's just there. So it didn't process it in a sense, it, it just finished it. Because <clears throat> sometimes the art is in seeing it happen, sometimes it's not. <laughs> oh, I'm still in the same window here. Uh, make random color lines with a hole in the middle and make a draggable. Okay, let's uh, have a look at that. sure how many of these you want to see comment section so how, how do we do that make a new generator we're stamping it instead of uh, drawing it the stroke color red pink and purple ah there's a zim v value where it's a dynamic parameter where zim will then pick from those colors if we just chose a random num a random color outside here and passed it into the generator, then it would only work with that that chosen color. But here we're saying no 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 we're not picking a random color outside. We're passing in a zim v value and we're expecting you, to, you Mr. Generator, to pick red, pink, or purple. And we've given it a bigger stroke width. The count is the same as before. We make the lines. We've translated 250 and rotated. Ah, so we're starting at the lines at 50, going to 200, translating back 250. That translates back to the origin or the center and rotating five. Okay. And then we set afterwards, after we make the drawing, uh, the generator's drawing property to be draggable. And we get this. Wow. It's prettier than I expected it was going to be. So it stamped it. It's a little bit thin. I wonder if we can drawing dot um, expand. So what expand does is it makes a hit area on it. Hopefully that'll work. So you see it expanded by 20 pixels. So now I can even drag it over here. If we don't want it to expand by 20 pixels, it looks like it expanded by more. Oh, because the whole drawing size is the size of the, rather than the size of that. Okay, got it. Anyway, so fine. Um, so that's that one. Neat, huh? I wonder if there is a way that, I want to see this push and pull. So let's, or push and pop. Let's get, <laughs> push and pull. Let's get at least um, to the push and pull and comment out that. And then maybe I'll let you, have a look at this on your own rather than me doing it with you here in this tutorial. Save my voice. Ah, right, we're looking in the same window. Make a series of colored lines. At times we're doing a series. Ah, this has a push and pop. So good. This is kind of doing the same thing. We'll have a read of it when we get in there. It's kind of doing the same thing, but we've a few things different. Make a series of colored lines with a hole in the middle, draggable. So it's like it was before, except rather than random, we're going to see a series. Uh, draw a line, go back to how it was, rotate, draw a line, etc. And then what do we say? Each time it draws the line, it chooses the next Zim V value. But we did it with push and pop. So did we, oh, using push and pop, right. Then we don't need to think about how to do this reset. So ready? Here's what we do. We pass in a series of colors, first of all. That's a different for stroke colors. Then what we do is we remember where we were with a push. Then we draw the line. Then we pop. We go back to where we remembered. So that remembers where we were, basically. We draw the line. Then pop takes us back to there. Then we rotate five degrees. Then we run it again. Remember where we were. Zero, zero, draw the line, pop, puts it back, rotate another five degrees. Okay, so push and pop take a little bit of getting used to. I expect that once you use it a few times, then it just becomes really easy and natural. Um, and we go control enter. Ah, so that worked too. I didn't make it draggable this time. Let's 
see that draw out though. So instead of stamp, we will say draw there. And we can see it draw out. Isn't that lovely? Okay. How about a quick peek at the docks? Same window. Quick peek at the docks, see if there's... So add a circle to the end. Oh yeah, we've only seen lines. You want to see some other shapes? Oh man, there's, there's quite a lot of them. Okay. So there's a lot of examples there, huh? Okay, fine. Let's let's just see the circle. <laughs> uh, where was that one? Add a circle to the end. Removing circle stroke, adding fill of the same color as the stroke. Do okay, blah blah blah. So add a circle to the end. Let's copy that. I think we're looking at the same one sort of here. the same but we're dotting a circle that has a radius of uh, no x x and y i think so that's x and y of 15 and 0 with a radius of 5 and then we're popping okay so basically it's just taking that circle right there and adding it in what we want to do each time ah oh, wow neat I like it. Okay, you see how this can be kind of handy. Why don't we leave it at there, though, going through the docs. That generally shows us, I mean, each of those things going to add on another feature of the generator. And, you know, I'll be here all day. So you guys go take a look at that. But let's go to the Zim site here and check out the generator examples. So there, instead of drawing a line each time, we're drawing a rectangle. And when we rotate the rectangle, it just happens to look at it like that. Here's the second one. Very similar to what we did before, where we're doing the colors, but this time we drew a circle rather than a rectangle. And, and we slowed it down. Note that that goes slower. Remember, it can be this fast. Now number three. Ooh, okay, so there we are generating uh, that kind of uh, look. Um, we can avoid the cutoff if, if we want, but um, that's it. Oh, by the way, this one, if you press it, it pauses as well. I'm not sure if that's built into the generator. Let's see if this one pauses. Yeah, okay, so it might have been built into the generator. You can probably avoid that if you want. Here's one that's similar, but a little bit different. And also we stopped at a certain time rather than kept going. Whoa, whoa, nice, huh? Whoa, number six, boop, boop. Again, here we are stamping these, number seven. So a generator doesn't have to be radial like that. So there we just generated a grid or indeed stamped a grid or whatever. So are, are you curious? Oh, how do we make that with the generator? Well, you go ahead and take a look. I'm sure you can find it. You can view the source here. I have a feeling that maybe some of these are already in the docs examples. So as you progress through the docs examples, we probably did the same batch. Uh, this one, a little bit different. We drew these shapes, and then we did the blob switch. Cool, huh? Let's remember that blob switch. And on the right side, instead of stamping, we did the classic. So we're generating a fractal based on the generator. See that? Ready? Pretty fast. Fractal. That's uh, a classic one, and here we can do it in Zim, or you can do it in Adobe Animate now. Yay! <laughs> Isn't that cool? I am Dr. Abstract. We have some fun with that. Um, that's the Zim generator. I did see out on the Adobe forum some people asking about how to do some processing stuff in Adobe Animate. Uh, well, you can do that too with the Zim Shim. If you get better at Zim, then you can start to bring in Zim items. Like these are tabs along here. Okay. 
I like those better than just this little HTML doohickey up here. Uh, and uh, processing, as far as I know, doesn't have these types of components that Zim have. I remember a message in the, in the gaming part of processing. So if you look up the game module or whatever processing, it says, this, by the way, is not like a full-blown um, uh, game sort of module like something like CreateJS. And that's what Adobe Animate's exporting to. And CreateJS is not a full game module. Like if, if you want full game module, you would go probably to Phaser. Phaser is built on Pixie.js. Pixie is very much like CreateJS. Phaser is huge in the HTML5 gaming world. But uh, we, we beat Phaser quite regularly on, on the amount of code needed for things like sprites and stuff. We've got a lot. We have a game module, too. Uh, we don't have quite as much, but we have physics. And maybe we could show you some physics at some point. Um, there's still lots to show you here in the Zim tutorials for Adobe Animate. I'm Dr. Abstract. Please join us at zimjs.com slash discord, zimjs.com slash slack. If you want to hang out with us, ask any questions. We'd love to see you there. Cheers.